how, how people interact with machines, and, and David mentioned it as well. One thing in, in her esteemed comments said, okay, when it's STEM, we really need to broaden that group. And, and one thing I worry about, so have we reached out to other sectors? So if we truly get this ubiquitous autonomy, what are people who are doing all of those jobs going to do? Have we, have, have we thought about the societal impacts on the economy? Where, where, where does that fit in? Uh, and in our schools, and, and so do we reach out enough to universities, get them involved in that um, dialogue, but also just thinking about it um, broader and, and bringing in a broader discussion. That's not, I, and well, I, that is something we can do as a center, bringing other people in. When we talk about these transformative things, making sure we get a broader group in to talk about what are the impacts and, and how we manage it. So that's, uh, Now, before becoming director, uh, you all were very accomplished and distinguished scientists, engineers, and researchers. As an employee coming up, what misconceptions of the center director job did you have <laughs> that you discovered uh, were different uh, once you got in the seat? <laughs> they thought we were smart. <laughs> Leave the bat. <laughs> uh, misconceptions. I I don't know. I, the ones I recall were sort of specific in, in certain areas where we get into disagreements, and, and uh, I decided not to support certain areas. So, but all in all, I think it was a pretty good relationship, and I always figured. My job was to uh, take care of things for the employees, and that was what I was there for. So it was a good, good relationship. Now, adding to what Pete said, one of the misconceptions I had was you, you did lose touch with all of those folks out there that you really envied and wish you were out there working as at that time, because it, it, it's you just cannot maintain that relationship that you've had with these folks as you come up through management. And, and I think that is that was one thing that I really uh, did not understand until I was in the office with Jerry and then later on. Yeah, I have a, had a senior person come to me when they became de Debbie Sander and look at me and go, so how does it feel to be part of the problem now? <laughs> <laughs> so then I knew what I was getting into by going to the office of director. So, um, the, uh, the, the thing I remember, um, and, and this is actually a, 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 a paraphrase quote from Jerry, and that is, I, I thought a decision would be a decision. Right? <laughs> and Jerry's quote, I think, was something like, no, a decision means the debate really starts. Now we we'll really start debating about what we're going to do. And so, uh, so listening and patience was a skill for me that I had to develop. Actually, Lisa, actually, Lisa was a great mentor, by the way. Um, and Lisa is, is expert at listening, patience and listening and getting input and synthesizing that input into a decision. I learned a lot from her, but man, did I struggle. Yeah, I, I think, I think um, it is, it's, it's how difficult it is, maybe when you make a decision or to communicate all the way, to get the message all the way down or with, through the organization uh, is what I kind of didn't, didn't get before, you know, looking, looking at center directors, just how difficult that is. Yeah, the only thing I would add, so actually I had all three jobs in the office of director, associate director, deputy director, center director, so my, my one epiphany, when I was in each one, I'd look up, oh, that's not so hard. <laughs> yeah, deputy thing, yeah, I, I can do that. Well, no, that, that was a hard job. <laughs> and I was deputy. Especially yeah. for me. Right? Yeah. That's not that hard. I can do that. No, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both harder than I thought they were. So that was uh, my epiphany. Wait till you get to headquarters. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, let, let's just not go there. <laughs> so, so when I was the director for, uh, my office was maybe 30 feet from the... Uh, so even as a director, I 
Couldn't make the lights go on. Oh, 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 Congress did a few times. So, so my office was 30 feet from the director, and, and I, I can't remember all of the specifics, but after I had the director's job for about a year, I thought, wow, this job is not what I thought it was. I, I couldn't pinpoint the differences. I, I think another difference is that uh, on, on the things, and it's not everything, that you do get to decide as a center director, um, you are the final arbiter. And, and when that happens, it changes your relationship with people. It, it becomes a little different. Uh, people that were your colleagues before, you, you could see eye to eye. But when you become the one who listens to everything and makes the final decision, even if it's not your idea, it, it changes a little bit um, your relationship with people. And that, and that takes a little bit of adjusting. Yeah, the next question I'd like to start with uh, Mr. Peterson. Um, uh, Dave, Dave Bowles commented about the change you know, the programmatic structure. And uh, you know, the role of center director has evolved from one where the director you know, actually had budget, made decisions on what programs to pursue, what research uh, to go after, to a role now where the director pursues roles and funds to support the goals of uh, program managers. Uh, what was it or what is it like to be director and not have free, free reign to pursue the ideas of your staff? And what would you like, would you like to see this change? And so how? And the last part might not be a good question for Steve, Lisa, and Dave. <laughs> well, I think uh, most people know sort of what my answer is. I like it the way it was when I came to work and when the researchers basically directed the research program and I think that gets fantastic results. You allow the creativity of the engineers uh, to of the researchers to, to help develop the program of where they were going and, and we still push it this way and that's what, that way. But uh, I'm a believer in that. Maybe it's like uh, my parents wondered about the next generation, you know, and how they were doing things. And, and I wonder, I really wonder about the next generation. You know. uh, but that's another story. But uh, uh, maybe, maybe what you're doing works, uh, but I don't think it gets the best research. And, uh, I would like to see it go back, and I, even when I was center director, I could look over the time from 1957 to 1990 and realize there was a constant fight going on to keep some control from headquarters. And there was more and more having to go up there and fight over the money and so forth, which of course was largely my job. And I felt that was not good at the time. Um, but it was there, and it's a natural part of what happens with the, the type of organization we became when we became part of NASA. So as I say, maybe, maybe what you're doing is for the best. Uh, I wouldn't do it that way if I had my choice. So, so you're yeah. the, the real challenge that these folks, unfortunately, I don't face it anymore than really, really, these other two guys, but the people on my right face is we talk about the workforce and the capabilities. Like sustaining that in the environment they have to operate is the challenge they really have to face. I mean, we're where we are, not by choice. It's just where we, where we end up being. And, and it, the job that Henry Reid had was challenging people and provide resources. These people got the same job. You just don't do it the same way. I mean, <laughs> if there's only one telephone, no telecoms, no tweets, and no email, and the U.S. mail is the way you communicate with headquarters, life is one way. <laughs> <laughs> but when you communicate at the speed of light, it becomes a, a lot more difficult to maintain any autonomy at all, really, in the environment these people work. But 
I just I happened to be on the cusp when that transition seemed to be happening, and, and it, it's a challenge. And, and these folks, in my opinion, have done an excellent job of, of doing that. They have made the adjustments at the center that makes Langley uh, very viable in today's environment. So, so the difficulty I've had is when we try to we try to act like things are separate, right? When we try to say. Um, we separate our missions from our capabilities um, and and don't treat them all as one and so I and what I mean by that is you know we'll be like well, we're gonna fund the missions but we're not gonna fund our capabilities and then and act like they're separate things and that's what I've been struggling to break down I tried to do it here at NASA Langley and I've certainly been doing it at headquarters where we understand that they're one and the same our capabilities enable our missions and we have to think of that as a whole and we have to make sure that we're enabling and creating those capabilities that will enable those missions of the future and think about them all together and so I've worked to make sure that our our missions are very engaged in deciding what do we need NASA to be in the future what capabilities do we need and not just and, and, and I, I don't know why the stovepipes happen but I, you know but not just putting blinders on and saying we're going this way and then the rest of NASA is going, what's happening there, right? So, so we don't have the things we need for the future. So that's been something I've worked to try to break down and not, not treat those as two separate things. And I know, I know Steve has been, you know, really helping and working as part yeah, of that. Yeah, it's made me very popular with the centers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take another question from the audience. Um, how do you think Langley's culture differs from that? of other centers or from headquarters and over the years how have interactions with the other centers changed? Well, so what I see from because I've been in all the different cultures I've worked I worked 15 years at Kennedy Space Center four years at Johnson Space Center 11 years at Langley and now I don't know, three years or so at headquarters so culture and how is Langley different um, you know what I, what I what I see is, you know, kind of a, more a, a depth of expertise at NASA Langley, and and it's interesting to watch, and you you could see it come together on some of those missions like Ares One X and Paddleboard, where you know, say the the project manager, the the Johnson team would kind of be like, okay, we got enough, now let's move, you know, and and, and you know they're they're good with kind of around 80 percent or so, and Langley might need to get more. You know more up to the more knowledge on exactly how we, the, the depth of that, um, and so so I've just seen from a research culture kind of versus uh, a flight, and that's not all, right? Because we have within NASA Langley we have kind of research and flight culture. So um, just just a, a bit of a bit of a difference there with kind of the that, but uh, but other than that, uh, you know, so it's just it's just a bit difference from a more operational culture and a more research. Yeah, I think that's fundamentally it. You know, the the you know, I think the the research the research centers are um, trying to really look at what will make a difference moving forward. You know, that is really the job, and I think that's really the, you know, that the technical excellence, the depth of it of ex of of technical capability and applying that to really enable some new things, brand new things, new capabilities uh, by integrating technologies, um, I think is really, is really you know, pretty prevalent across the research centers. I think as a research center, Yang is somewhat unique in that uh, we have more of a systems view of things. I think in, in the directorates, particularly you know, the ones that Jerry led and the one that Dell led, there's a strong systems you know, uh, analysis and systems capability too that drives the technology, and then we look, we, we feed that back in the system and see how it makes a difference. So that's might maybe a, an area where NASA that Langley is somewhat unique, particularly on the vehicle side. Um, you know, I think the so the the relationships between the centers that's an interesting one. I you know I've been out of the game for a little while, yeah. so maybe Dave can comment on this. Sure. Um, but I I believe um, particularly since Columbia that um, 
the center leadership, the center leadership leaders have really put in time and effort to collaborate more effectively across centers. It hasn't all been, uh, you know, a honeymoon, I'll say, uh, all the time. But I, I give credit to center leadership, um, Office of Director Alan Down, in really figuring out ways to collaborate, to use, most effectively use the capabilities across the centers in a way to most effectively uh, accomplish the mission for, for the agency. So I think that's, you know, that's been a journey we've been on since probably even, you know, I'm, at least I can remember since the 90, you know, mid 90s. And, uh, and I think the current leadership is doing a, a really good job. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> real quickly, a couple comments related to that. First of all, I think actually when you look at culture, we have a lot more in common in culture across the agency maybe than people want to give credit for. We, I think we all have a culture of passion around what NASA does. And, and sometimes we, we approach problems uh, differently and think about them differently, but that's good. Uh, it, it gets back to that diversity of thought and approach on how you're going to solve a problem. So I, Sometimes that didn't get talked about. We talk about our cultural differences across centers, but actually I think we have a lot of uh, cultural similarities in, in our passion uh, for the agency. So that's, that's one comment. And, it, and I think uh, it has evolved over the years that it, not so much culture, but competition between centers. I, I think we have, uh, I've seen a big shift over the last, geez, 10 years. I, I, I'm trying to think of the time, but in the, in the recent past where Hey, what is, we all bring something uh, valuable uh, to the table to get the mission done and, and let's concentrate on those things we're good at. I've spent a lot of time over the last two years talking about Langley's value proposition uh, and what we bring to the thing. It's not everything the agency does. We have things we're very good at and other centers have things they're very good at and we ought to team together to get the mission done. As far as teaming, I see David McBride, my counterpart from Armstrong sitting over there, Ricky Shine, I know is here from uh, Glenn, uh, Eugene, uh, two and I talk all the time. Actually, Eugene, David, myself, and, and Janet Condi, Glenn, we, we actually talk a lot, uh, not, not conspiring against the reports, <laughs> but we, we do have some things in common. And I talked to Ellen and I talked to Todd May, so I, I think that's actually has changed. Uh, over the last uh, 10 years of, of working together and saying, hey, we all bring something uh, to the table, so let's uh, build on that. And I, and I wanted to add in too, I know, because Robert Lightfoot being, he was previously the center director of Marshall and then me being at Langley, you know, we, we, work, we work really hard to make sure the missions and the centers are all together and really build that team and to break down those barriers and to make sure it's clear roles and responsibilities across the centers. So we don't have that unhealthy competition that was occurring that was across different. centers that was kind of hitting and, and, and created those interdependencies across all those centers. That's something we focused on extensively, um, you know, since we, we've both been up there. Okay. Uh, what's the uh, one thing that you did as center director that in hindsight you would have done differently? And and uh, what is the one thing that you were not able to accomplish during your tenure that you wish you would have been able to? Well, let's see, so I can say that uh, one, one thing, so I, I was, when I, when I came into NASA Langley, as I mentioned, I, I was uh, assigned the reorganization of the center. Um, and, I, and, and that I wouldn't, because I, I spent quite a bit of time and, and got a lot of input and had a lot of help from folks in developing that. But I think the, we did this uh, kind of new idea in the competition of the jobs once we were done with the reorg. And that was even more popular than the reorg. <laughs> and so uh, I, I can tell you there was tremendous stress around that that occurred. Um, now maybe some good things in the end, I, maybe I can rationalize, but in the end, some really good things that came out because I think people were then placed in different positions and I saw a uh, much more integration across and people could visualize, they didn't identify themselves with their job. They identified themselves with the team to accomplish things. So I saw some healthiness come out of that, but I can tell you there was a lot of stress and I'm uh, associated with that competition on those those jobs, and uh, and I wonder if there was a better way to do that, you know, looking back, so. 
if I can make a comment on Langley organization. Um, I remember two things that I heard clearly from Langley employees. The first was, we don't like our organization. And when we tried to do something about it, they would say, we like this new one less. <laughs> also sometimes said, you know, you think after a hundred years, if there was a right way to do it, we might have stumbled onto it. Yes, yeah, so this is somewhat of a kind of, yeah, my, my, my one regret is saying yes to Robert when he called me to come up to headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, you know, the un unfinished business um, is, is interesting. I mean, you know, the... Um, I think, you know, in any job, it takes, um, I was deputy for a, a while, for nine years, so, so um, I was in the office of the director for over, you know, for over 10 years. But it's different when you're the person running the show, right? Different when you're the, the, when the, you're the person who's making decisions and you can't go, well, we'll just have to run that by Lisa and get her, get her to make that decision. So, <laughs> so um, you know, I think um, there are, uh, we're, we're on, I think we're on a really good trajectory in aeronautics, uh, particularly with Aviation New Horizons. And um, I give J1 Shin and ARMD a lot of credit for that, but I also give Langley a lot of credit for that, because we really pushed from our end. Um, and sometimes not being very popular with headquarters in the pushing. Um, you know, I think so that, I think that's, you know, seeing that through, or we're starting to see that through. And I wish we've been around to see that through. Um, just to be honest with you, I'm very proud of the work we do in earth science and atmospheric science. I am just, you know, I spent most of my technical career doing remote sensing instrument development and mission and mission systems engineering for the science missions. And, um, you know, I think we, 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 we're starting to get on really solid footing there um, with the next generation of instruments. And, um, you know, I wish, wish I would have been around to see that do more. Is the one area in, in the AT that I am really worried about now. To be honest with you, I'm just going to be honest. It's you know I'm really worried about it. Um, I, my personal opinion, you know, um, so uh, so the, the, the perfect example of what we could do here, right, in, in this area is uh, stratospheric ozone depletion, right? Um, we developed science, did science research, remote sensing instruments. Uh, inform, use that data to inform policy, it led to Montreal Pro Protocol and Amendments, uh, led to a, a recovery of stratospheric ozone, right, um, and uh, which is a filter for UV rays, right, and we used our road sensing science to uh, validate the effectiveness of that uh, policy, right. Well, we should be kind of doing that now, uh, what's going on with, with the change in the earth now, and so I really worry.